Hello, I'm Alessandro Luminuco. I'm a principal engineer in Cisco Outshift, and I'm also part of the um, agency collective. Uh, today, I'm going to present, introduce you some of the components that we've built uh, in the in agency. And uh, I'm also going to give you a quick demo of those components. Uh, in particular, I'm going to focus on the on uh, Agent Connect protocol and the tools that we uh, we have built around it. So to introduce these components, I'm going to uh, run you through um, a scenario here. So I'm a developer in this scenario, and I need to create an AI app to uh, automate marketing email composition. I'm a Langraph developer, so I know how to use Langraph to build this, uh, this agentic application. Uh, I could build everything from scratch, but I, I'm sure that there are agents out there that can help me. The problem I have is that I don't know how to find them. So the, the, the first question I have is how can I easily find agents that are already available? So let's assume that I use a, a search engine and after a while I, I, found a, I find a couple of agents that could actually uh, be interesting for me. Uh, this is not the, uh, the end of the problems because I still don't know how to use these agents. In particular, I have here, I found an email composer which is, looks very interesting, but this comes as an internet service and I don't know how to talk to it. Another one is an email uh, reviewer, which is also very interesting, but it's this time is available as source code. It's available on GitHub and I discover it's written in Llama index. But as I said, in this scenario, I'm a Langraph developer, so I don't know how to, how to use it. I cannot stitch it with the, within my Langraph application. So bottom line, I have two agents that I would like to use, but I don't know how to use them. I don't know how to glue them. So we asked ourselves, what if there existed a standard way to describe agents and their use? What if I could have a directory that can uh, allow me to easily find this agent, like a yellow pages for agents? If there was a protocol that would standardize the way these agents talk to each other or the way I could invoke these agents from my uh, multi-agent software? What if the, the, there was a tool that tell me deploying these agents or consume them through that protocol? And then we came up with a set of components, which I'm going to describe to you today, which are the agent manifest, which is a standard way to describe what an agent does, what are his input, its output, uh, how can I either deploy or consume, in them, or consume it. Then there is the agent directory, which is, as I said, is a, the yellow pages of agents. I can easily find agents and locate the manifest of those agents in this directory. Then we introduce the agent connect protocol, which is a, a, a standard protocol that allow one agent to invoke another agent through various ways um, or multi-agent software to invoke multiple agents. And finally, there is the workflow server, which is in charge of, on one side, taking a manifest, check how to deploy a given agent and deploys it, and when needed, take the source code of that agent, execute it, and expose it over ACP. So if you have, a, if you have an agent that is not already ACP compliant, the workflow server can help you with that. So let's look at these things in action in our specific scenario. So let's start with the first agent. As I said, the first agent was an email composer. I'm assuming that I already downloaded the, uh, the manifest from the uh, directory. And if you can see in the end, the manifest is a JSON data structure, which contains lots of information about the agent in a standard way. So it contains the name of the agent, the version of the agent, the description of the agent. So in this case, this agent offer a chat interface to compose an email for marketing campaign, which is exactly what I need. Uh, and then it describes the input format. So what it expects as input, what, is, what it produces as output. And finally, he has a section dedicated to the deployment. And the deployment in this case, in this case says that this agent is a remote service. It's, expo it's, talk, it's exposing ACP and it's available at that URL. So basically in this specific case, I need, uh, I can talk to the agent. So if I go in that URL and do slash docs, I can see the specification of that agent and that specification is an ACP specification. So uh, now the email composer, thanks to the manifest, I know what it does, I know how to talk to it and I know how to invoke it thanks to ACP. So first problem solved. Let's move to the second agent, which was the email reviewer. 
And also in this case, I have the manifest. So if I look in the manifest again, I have information about how to use this agent, what are the input, what are the output, what it does. In this case, reviews email and tries to adapt it to a target audience that I specify. And uh, the di main difference here is the deployment part. In this case, it's not a remote service, but it comes as source code. The source code is available at a given uh, 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 GitHub location, and it says that this agent is written in Llama index with some configuration about how to, to use it in Llama index. But now I don't, I don't want to use Llama index, and I cannot just directly take this agent and use it in Llama index. So in my line graph application. So what I can do here is to use the agent workflow server. In particular here, I'm using uh, the CLI tool that is workflow server manager. In this case, op, uh, I'm using the deploy option. So among the things I can do here, I can, do the de I, I can deploy uh, an agent. And when I see the deploy, the deploy action that I have, I can uh, um, I can provide. I should provide the manifest, and I should provide an environment variable. Well, the manifest I have it. Well, the environment variable basically is a set of configuration that this agent needs, and also these configuration are declared in the manifest. Uh, I'm talking about things like uh, uh, which LLM to use, the key to use that LLM. Assuming that I'm using OpenAI, what is the key to consume uh, uh, OpenAI LLM? Once I run this, uh, the workflow server is packaging this agent into actual server, which exposes ACP. And now I have it running in this case on my machine on that port. And if I try to connect to my local address on that specific port, and I also do slash docs, I obtain again, this specification of ACP. So now we, I'm in the same situation as before for the email composer. The email composer was running already as a service and I know how to talk to it thanks to ACP. And while the email reviewer was coming as source code, but thanks to the agent workflow server, now it's running as uh, uh, in a Docker container exposing uh, uh, ACP. So what, what is left now is to glue them together. Now I know how to glue them together and I'm gonna use some of the library, which we call the ACP SDK, to uh, glue these two agents into a multi-agent software that in this specific case will use LangGraph. So let's move to the next step. So let's put all everything together in the multi-agent software. So here I'm opening, I already wrote the code for this. This is like the uh, a LangGraph code. If you see here, I'm importing the um, agency ACP SDK. In particular, I'm importing ACP node. ACP node is a LangGraph node that I can add to any LangGraph graph, but under the hood is gonna be a client of the remote agent and is gonna use ACP to do that. So let, let's see this in a bit more details. If you, if you look where I use it, when I have to instantiate the node that I have to put in the LAN graph, I'm using ACP node. I'll provide the remote location. I'll provide what are the input scheme and the output schema that I can automatically generate from the manifest. And finally, I can add um, these nodes, the same for the email reviewer, to my LAN graph graph. This is typical uh, normal LAN graph programming. And here, if I look at the graph that I generate after the graph compilation, I obtain this. As you can see here, I have multiple nodes and I would like to draw your attention to uh, three different things. One is the, the email composer, the email reviewer. These are regular LAN graph nodes, but under the hood, they are placeholders for the remote invocation of the agents that are actually running over ACP. And you can see here on the left, so the email composer and the email reviewer are actually stub, if you want, that are used to, to then invoke the remote agents through ACP. Then there is another component that uh, we call the IO mapper. This is another component that we are creating in, um, in, uh, in agency. And uh, this is an agent that is, makes very easy to glue together agents that are not conceived to be talking to each other. In this case, we have the email composer that produces an email, an email reviewer that expects an email, but the format and the semantics of the fields of the output of the email composer are not necessarily the same as the input of the email reviewer. So you probably need a, some conversion, some reformatting, maybe some semantic manipulation 
of the output of the first agent to be ready as to to be used as an input for the next agent. And that's what the IO mapper does. And it does it in an automatic way because thanks to the manifest, both mail composer and email reviewer are describing their input and their output. So they are saying, uh, what is the format? What is the meaning of the different fields? And even they are providing description and examples. So the IO mapper can be fed with, the, with this information coming from the manifest and they will automatically, also using an LLM when needed, to do this conversion from one agent output into the next agent input. And this is completely for free from a de developer perspective. Then another important bit is the send grid. Send grid, in this case, it's that this application is meant to send emails for real. And to send emails in this specific case, in this scenario, we decided to use Twilio send grid API. Now, calling an API could be complex. And when I build the agent, I don't want to worry about how to call Twilio. So that's why we created another component in the agency that is called API Bridge Agent. API Bridge Agents is essentially an API gateway that on one side exposes natural language interface. And on the other side is actually doing the REST interface, the REST calls expected by the remote service we would like to invoke. In this case, it is configured with Twilio. So on one side, you can talk to the agent by sending natural language requests, for example, to send emails while the API bridge agent will convert this to the actual calls to the, to the remote call. And by the way, in this case, it supports one API, but it could support many of them if configured. When I want to use the API, API bridge agent in my multi-agent software, in this, in, this, in this new agent that I'm creating, I can use again the ACP SDK to invoke API bridge agent. And that's exactly what this send grid node here is. This is a land graph node which under the hood is taking the instructions that are coming from the previous nodes and the, it is sending them to the API bridge agent over you know, the interface the API bridge agent offer, but essentially with natural language. And then the API bridge agent is actually doing the performing the, the REST request to Twilio to send the email. Now, let's see this application in action. So I could, again, package this, this, uh, this uh, application in a manifest and now and have the agent workflow server to run it and potentially expose also this application in ACP. What I'm gonna show you today is to run directly the application using just Python, standard Python. And that's what, um, what I'm showing here. So here, basically I'm running the application, invoking Python with that specific uh, um, main that I have. And this is actually the application running. And now he's asking me what kind of email I would like to build. I'm saying that I would like to advertise the agency initiative. It proposes me an email thanks to the email composer. And now I'm asking for a review that is, as you can see here, is going to the locally run, uh, to the locally running email reviewer. So in this other tab, I have the email reviewer that I started earlier. And I see that I'm receiving a request from the, um, from the uh, from the uh, application to perform an email review. So this is performing the email review, it's returning the result, this is the result, and finally, the email is sent thanks to the uh, API bridge agent. And at the end, I actually received this email uh, in my Outlook where you know I have that email that is, uh, has been just composed uh, thanks to this multi-agent software. This completes the demo. And uh, just to sum summarize, I showed you uh, how the different components that we are introducing in uh, agency could be used to build a multi-agent software, and I show how they actually work in practice.